Thank you to the Center for Medicinal Cannabis Research for this conference and for the opportunity for me to present. My name is Charlotte Bastin, Instructional Design Coordinator at Santé Cannabis, and I'm going to talk about sexual dysmorphism in the use and effectiveness of cannabinoid-based medicines, real-world data findings from an ongoing observational study. The current recommendations pertaining to medical cannabis have limited gener generalization potential due to the lack of sex-related data reporting. Without supporting data, we should not presume that cannabis will have the exact same effects in men and women. This knowledge gap needs to be addressed as cannabinoid-based medicines use becomes more common in clinical settings, especially to manage chronic pain, which is the most common clinical use of medical cannabis globally. We believe that real-world data, like the one that our observational study provides, can help fill this knowledge gap and guide future randomized control trials. Our objective was to compare the use and effectiveness of cannabinoid-based medicines to treat chronic pain and associated symptoms in dorsopathies in our male and female patients. This is an observational study, and our sample consists of consenting adult patients diagnosed with dorsopathies and receiving add-on cannabinoid-based treatment. Our patients are predominantly referred by their family physician, specialist, or nurse practitioner, often after failing conventional treatments. Diagnoses are provided by the referring professional. The eligibility for a cannabinoid-based treatment is determined at the discretion of our clinic physicians and is based on a standard clinical assessment. The exclusion criteria include pregnancy, lactation, and psychotic disorder. The study participants did not receive compensation and the enrollment in the study did not affect their clinical care. The study was approved by the McGill University Ethics Committee. All data was collected as part of our standard clinical procedure during the initial and three-month follow-up visits that took place between July 2020 and October 2021 and later extracted from our electronic medical records. A note that we used patient assigned sex at birth for our analysis. Now, for the results. Among 364 patients, cannabinoid-based medicines recommendations significantly differ at baseline between sexes. The CBD dominant products are more often frequent are more frequently authorized for female patients overall, that is 56.5%, than for male males overall, that is 33.1%. On the other hand, THC CBD one to one and THC dominant products are more frequently authorized for male patients overall, that is 64.4% and 2.5% respectively, as compared to 43.5% and 0% respectively for female patients overall. As for the effectiveness of cannabinoid-based medicines assessed with the ESAS, we found that pain, well-being, and fatigue scores significantly improved from baseline to the follow-up at three months, independently from sex or cannabinoid profile. We found that females report significantly worse overall scores in fatigue and well-being, as well as more adverse events. The significantly, there, we found higher, significantly higher proportion of cannabis-naive females, that is 34% overall, than males that is 19% of all males. We think that the lower previous cannabis use in female patients could possibly explain the higher rate of reported adverse events, as well as the more frequent CBD predominant profile recommendations. Indeed, patients that never tried cannabis before often get prescribed CBD dominant products to avoid adverse events that are frequently caused by THC. In conclusion, our study shows preliminary results indicating that cannabinoid-based medicines, recommendations, adverse events, and previous cannabis use differ between men and women. It also shows that with different baseline treatment plans, patients of both sexes report similar improvement on pain, fatigue, and well-being, which was unexpected as THC has analgesic properties, but evidence is lacking for CBD's potential analgesic properties. This will require more investigation. We believe that our results are novel considering the current lack of sex-related data reporting. Only a few studies on medical cannabis present results for each sex. So our real-world findings about cannabinoids' effectiveness in real-world patients um, have the potential to 
um, help inform medical cannabis treatment plans, um, design and improve patient care. Of course, we need to further research confounding factors to clarify uh, the sexual dysmorphism in cannabinoid-based treatment recommendations and therapeutic effects with larger samples and over a longer period of time. I would like to thank the patients who participated to our study, as well as our clin clinical team and my colleagues who helped make this abstract, Lucille Rapin, Dr. Arboleda, Erin Prosk, Dr. Wetty, and Dr. Dworkind. Uh, last disclaimer that Santé Cannabis is a medical cannabis clinic and research center operating within the public healthcare system and patients receive free care. The study has not received uh, external funding and no author has a financial or prof professional incentive to publish. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.